So you, you have lived and worked in the Europe, you've lived in the UK, in Canada. Does the place matter to you where you are? Um, well, actually, one thing that is really interesting about my, what I do, which I really like, is that I get to perform a, like a little sociological experiment in the different countries that I work. And I feel really grateful for being able to work all over the place because I get to do ostensibly the same thing in different places. Um, so you present impossible problems in different places and different cultures react in different ways. So, you know, I mean, for example, the Dutch are very democratic in their thinking. So they come around an idea as a group and they try to kind of problem solve very much uh, in a kind of, you know, if I was going to visually represent it in a circle. And so it might take a little longer because everybody has to be a participant, a participant in the uh, solution to the problem. But you do come up with a very kind of solid solution that everybody's happy about, happy about I think. Um, and it comes out of something very, uh, very innate and very deep in the kind of Dutch psyche, I think. Um, and, you know, the British, for example, are incredibly good at organization. I mean, you know, in Europe, they're the best at organization. They have the most efficient stage management teams. Um, and so there's very open communication. Um, uh, whereas, for example, in Italy and France communication, there's this sort of stage management sort of doesn't exist. It's weird. There are no notes, you know, it kind of you know, things happen in the rehearsal room and you have to sort of be in the rehearsal room to find out what's going on. It's, it's sort of quite prevalent in all of Europe. So as a designer, that's, you know, it's, it's, it's very frustrating because, you know, somebody come, passes you in the hallway and goes, oh, did you hear about the new car <laughs> in Act Two? But I think it's a really interesting, I mean, I do think it's sort of quite interesting. Yeah. Um, and Canada, I have to ask about Canada, coming culturally to Canada from... Well, Canada's really, Canada, um, Canadians are very, um, we are, I really enjoy working in Canada because we're very um, calm in our approach to situations. People don't, you know, we don't get upset. We very calmly approach everything. And so people like to find, people like to find solutions. Um, and they and there's very good communication here, which is something that's shared with the British. I mean, the, the theater communication, stage management is very good here, and, um, and people like to solve things together as well. So it's very democratic in that way. I think um, the states is more hierarchical than we are. So in fact, I find it more. It's very interesting. People people's positions are more important in the States. Um, whereas, you know, here, if you're a stagehand and you happen to have a good idea, you can blurt it out and, mm. and then maybe somebody will listen to it. I don't know. Um, so it is interesting. It's culturally, that's sort of, I think it's very, I feel very lucky to be able to see that and interact with that. You know, Italy's a whole different other story and, you know, strange ways of approaching things in different places it's it's very and then i'm getting to do and it's also it's also a challenge these are things like i say you know sometimes yeah. impossible things and different people have different reactions but ultimately you know it's sort of like depends on the people really you know sometimes you have great people in a, in a place young designers what would you say to young designers whether in a design school or in a high school or in a theater school to not to get the most bang for the buck, but to bring them into a, a, a career track that will actually lead them to the deep end of the pool, what we've been talking about here. What would I say to them? What would you say to them? <laughs> Do what? I mean, apprentice, uh, find a mentor, uh, go to Wawa, Ontario, go to Europe. I mean... Uh -huh. uh, that's a difficult question. It's a difficult question. Um, because I think it's very, it's really difficult now. I feel it's difficult. It's much changed. I think it's changed since I was younger, um, just a long time ago. Um, <laughs> you know, it is, it's completely different than when I was 30 years ago. I think the jobs are fewer. As you say, the budgets are lower. 
um, I think they're paying designers the same as they were paying them 30 years ago when I was first designing. And so, you know, it's really difficult. It's really difficult because, you know, you know, pushing is very tiring. You know, it's really hard to kind of make your way. And there aren't that many jobs. And the older, more experienced designers are holding on to those jobs because there aren't that many jobs there out there. Um, you know, the cultural landscape is really tough at the moment and not getting any better, I don't think, because but what of the can lack they of do? funding. What can they do? What can they do? Call you? They go to Paris? Paris? Sure, can call me. Go to I mean, New I'm York? I'm happy to kind of, <laughs> and, you know, have people work with me. No, I mean, it's, you know, it's difficult. It's not even, it's not any better in Europe. And, you know, now budgets are being cut everywhere culturally. It's really difficult. I don't know. Um, the only thing that you can do is to, um, you know, I think you have to, you know, you have to work hard. You probably have to work harder now than, than 30 years ago, I think. Um, you have to be able to balance, make stuff out of nothing, um, make beautiful stuff out of nothing. I really don't, I think it's really tough. Um, I've, uh, um, I mean, the only thing I would say is that to sort of keep, it's very easy now to be in contact with things that's hap that, are, that are happening around the world. And I think it's really nice to be able to keep an open mind to what's going on in other countries and how they approach theater. Because I think people have an idea of what theater should be, especially designers. So it's, and that can be sort of, you know, confining, I think. You know, an idea of what professional theater can be. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, professional, we're just, sto we're telling stories. So, and I think, you know, the whole wonderful thing about it. A, a new generation is they have a different way of you know, a new way of experiencing the world so hopefully they'll bring some of that language into you know telling yeah. stories I think what would be terrible is to kind of go into the world think I have to do a set the way the previous generation did a set you know there are new ways of doing things I mean I think that the stumbling block is that it's just getting harder and harder to do it um, right financially and um, you know I mean it's like a, it's like a constant be constantly being slapped in the face I mean my, my bottom question and maybe we don't have time for it because I do think we live in a visually jaded culture that mm -hmm. has been so overfed on the fast food the of, yeah. of great fast food images yeah. that are kind of narcotic yeah. that how do you origin use original images to to speak about levels and realities when your audiences are so jaded by what they've been uh, you know sped fed all this time yeah i mean you said jaded but i think in some on some level where it's really interesting because we're so we're sophisticated i think of it as sophisticated because you don't have to you know i mean you know i think even three gen two generations ago you had to be much more specific about what you used and you know that is the responsibility of of our generation to be able to tell stories using that language or understanding that language and not ignoring it, not saying mm. that doesn't exist. It exi it's there. It's, that's how we experience things. So that's how, you know, and I think that, you know, who's more prepared than it than a generation that grew up um, with that. Um, so, and I, and I do think that, you know, that's who we are. You know, it's like a sort of, um, and, you know, until we begin to kind of understand what that means um, and how to tell stories, you, either using that or understanding the effect of that on us, you know, that's, I think that's our responsibility as storytellers. And I do think that's the responsibility as theater makers is to, is it gives us the ability to step back and, and look at that um, and to somehow place it in parentheses or, or, allow the audience to see that. Um, and I do think there's something, you know, what you say about the sort of bullet going through the head and out the other side. See, you know, that's part of the reason why we should be exploring different ways of, of telling those stories is how do we, how do we really talk about what that, what effect that is having on us 
you know, maybe it is just as simple as somebody sitting in a chair telling a story, but, you know, there might be another way of doing that. Um, yeah. Thanks, Michael. That <laughs> was great. Welcome.